Hello and welcome to Fifth Gear. Today, Vicky and I will be pitting two of the most talked about machines in motoring head to head. It's the Renault Sport Megane 265 <laughs> versus the Toyota GT86. <laughs> the kind of battle that will set internet forums on fire. <laughs> But first, some introductions. The Toyota GT86 is a 200 horsepower rear wheel drive sports car for hot hatch cash. It's the best value driver's car this century, and we love it. But is it as razor sharp to drive as the best hot hatch on sale? This is an even bigger deal than a contest between two incredible driver's cars. It's a contest between front-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive. It's written into petrolhead folklore that rear-drive cars are better balanced and better fun. But is that always the case? In a front-wheel drive car, the front tyres take care of the steering and power delivery. This unfair division of labour can cause nose-heavy handling. But in a rear-wheel drive car, the back tyres take care of the acceleration and all the fronts have to do is steer. This shares the load more evenly and can lead to better balanced handling. Test one gets us straight to the point. It's a head-to-head -head auto test designed to reveal the differences in low-speed handling. And once his lordship has finished faffing about with the cones, we'll begin. It's best of three, and I'm taking them again. Traction, agility and power are key. I'm in good shape thanks to my 68 brake horsepower advantage. It is tempting to put a load of revs down on the off, but I'm just going to end up with wheel spin, so I need to be quite cautious. While I may be down on grunt, my rear-wheel drive GT86 should give better traction off the line. Game on. Right then, warm up the shoulder muscles. Takes six seconds. She's about two seconds quicker than a 60 in that front wheel drive, but she has got the traction. Out of the blocks, it's neck and neck. The Megan's power advantage is wasted on the damp track as Vicky wheel spins the power away. But we've got into the box identical. Get reversed. She's ahead of me. <laughs> Keeping tight to the cones is essential, and the GT86's better front-end grip helps me out. It's neck and neck. We're going round the roundabout. Oh, no, I've gone absolutely the wrong way round. <laughs> oh, I went the wrong way round the roundabout, and I had to give way to him. It's just all about parking, as neat as you can. I think that was a win. Or was that a dead heat? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think he just beat me there. <laughs> Partly thanks to Vicky's lack of spatial awareness, it's round one to me and the Toyota. Three, two, one, go! Oh, good start. There were not too much wheels spin. I think I've got better gumption as soon as I get off the line. She's got that extra power. She's edge to head. And now I'm ahead of Tafir. Brakes! Grab reverse. <laughs> I've got no traction going backwards. And to first one. Which is head! I've got the edge. I've got to do a quick round around that. Oh, I almost forgot to go round the roundabout. No, it's bogged down! <laughs> we both messed up on the roundabout. My spin turn didn't work! I'm gonna lose! Yes! <laughs> oh, the handbrake is not brilliant, so I can't handbrake it into it, but I did it first and I'm here. But traction turned itself off again. On again. On again. Well done. Hate losing. Round three is the decider. 3,000 RPM this time. I think three and a half three, is a bit too quick. Two, one, go. Oh, no, I'm bogged down. I haven't got my body. I'm not ready. I wasn't ready. OK, so I'm going to leave it in first gear. It's neck and neck, we head for the garage! Into the box. Don't do the garage wall reverse. Ram it into reverse. No traction at all, go backwards in this little Toyota. Oh, 
grab first. Oh, can't get first here. Now we've got to slide them back. Come on. Do I need a handbrake now? Whoa, 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 whoa. Tiff's ahead. This is not good. Head to my finish line. Little handbrake and... I think that's uh, another win. I um, can't get the course right. I'm really oh, sorry. See, I'm blaming my tonsillitis. The excuses are coming. The excuses are coming already. Excuses aside, this has been very close. But the GT86 deserves its victory. It's quicker off the line, slightly more agile, can power slide round the roundabout and has a sharper handbrake. It's a victory for the traction and chassis balance of rear-wheel drive. Oh, man, the handbrakes, they don't make them like they used to. Let's get back to business. Toyota GT86 versus Renault Sport Megane 265. It's the best value driver's car of the century versus the finest hot hatch on sale. And rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive. Thanks to a victory in the auto test earlier, it's currently 1 0 to the Toyota and rear wheel drive. Test number two time to play. You may have noticed on fifth gear that we like to push a car beyond its limits to see how well it dances. And to do that, we either have to flick it. Handbrake it. Or power slide it. Basically, we love to get cars sideways. So we want to see which car does it best. We'll both use very different techniques. I'll have to apply as much power as possible to make the rear wheels of the Toyota lose traction and slide out. I might have a trickier job. Without any power going to the rear wheels, I'll have to try a variety of tricks to get it sliding out. This drift box telemetry, as used in pro drifting competitions, will measure our drift angle, basically how sideways we are. Biggest angle wins, and I'll let her ladyship go first in the McGann. So what's your plan then, Vix? Well, I'm thinking perhaps a bit of lift-off oversteer right. to get us in. Throw the weight off the wheels. Yeah, exactly. Lifting off the throttle transfers weight away from the rear wheels, giving them less grip and more chance of sliding. First, turn into the corner, then back off the throttle, and finally, apply opposite lock. Oh, that's quick. Uh, understeer, understeering. Yes, we've got understeer. That didn't do anything. Because... No, that was nothing. Higher speed cooling might get me to lift up over the yeah. hairpin. Hmm, I need a different approach. Scandinavian flick? Yeah. Flicking the car in the wrong direction before the corner destabilises it. The aim is to swing the rear end round like a pendulum. First, flick against the corner, then sharply turn in and apply opposite lock. Right, over the track. Aggressive flick, aggressive flick. Rawr, aggressive flick. No, it starts to go, but then it goes back into an understeer. And that's because the car just doesn't want you to go sideways no. normally. It wants to protect you and keep you safe. So... They must have got good rear-end grip, then, which is unusual in front-wheel drive cars. So it's obviously they've got a very good all four wheels working for grip. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to resort to the handbrake. Right, so... It's primitive, but effective. Locking the rear wheels with the handbrake causes them to slide out sideways in the middle of the corner. First, turn in sharply, then yank on the handbrake, then release it and apply opposite lock once the car is sideways. Give it a bit of a flick, a bit more of a flick. Oh, yeah, catch it, catch it. Oh! oh we did it, we did it, we did it. What was the score? What was the score? I can't read them. 38 degrees. We got there in the end, and it was a lesson in how to make a front-wheel drive car misbehave. I need to beat a 38-degree drift in the Toyota, which I'm hoping I'll be able to do. First, I'll take a normal racing line and do nothing to provoke a slide. This will give me an idea of the car's natural balance. 
turning normally and oh, it just wants to go. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Nice. But that's just a proper racy live, nice bit of oversteer, a nice crunch gear change to finish <laughs> it off. Unfortunately, though, not very spectacular on our ometer. What did it get then? 16. Next, some provocation. Right, rear wheel drive with a scandy flick on the way in. Oh, 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 the GT86 is very easy to control on the limit. I think I could go even faster and keep it on the track. Up to about 70 miles an hour, down the gear, flick it one way and the other way, get on the locks. Whoa. Oh, that's good. That's going, it's oh, going up. Oh, I nearly lost it. Whoa. Well done. 48. Well done. <laughs> What can I say? Beaten by Sir Driftalot himself. The Megan is an enormously stable and grippy car. When you want to go fast, that's exactly what you need. But when you want to have fun, it can hold you back. Oh. Whereas the Toyota is all about fun and wins the test with a 48 degree drift. So it's now 2-0 to Tiff and Rear Wheel Drive. At the end of the show, we'll find out if the Megan's grip and power might hand it victory over a flat-out flying lap. <laughs> On paper, my front-wheel drive Renault has the edge. It's got more power, more torque, a faster 0-62 to time. It's even got wider tyres. But don't discount the rear-wheel drive GT86. It's 100 kilograms lighter and I'm behind the wheel. We'll have a quick warm-up, then fire off a flying lap. I'm up first. Strapped in tight, Mr. Yeah. Riddell. Out on the track, proper lapping now. I've just realised my traction is still on, so that'll go off. Schoolgirl error. But at least I can do it on the move. Some cars you have to blow but stop when you do it. What do you think makes this McGann so good then as a front wheel drive car? I think it's got a fantastic chassis and also a really gutsy engine. The main thing about front wheel drive is getting those front wheels as straight as possible, as soon as possible, to get the traction down. Really what, what was the problem? What was the Because use? this is my what warm up lap. What was that all about? This is my warm up lap. Right, I'm going to start your watch as we get out for a timed lap, starting now. Fifth gear up the main straight, nudging about 113. This is where you might get a bit of lift or bonus to if it's going to attack. <laughs> it felt a bit light in the rear there. Coming out of that corner, nearly 90. You need to use all the road. I need to just maximise every exit. You got in too quick, Victoria. You got in too quick. We're coming out well. Oh, it's hitting the limiter. What is fantastic about this car is you put your foot down and providing the wheels are somewhere in a straight line, it just squats, grips and goes. Nearly 150, probably 120 almost. Now this is going to be... Oh, it's got a bit... Oh, it's got it too... Oh, <laughs> big understeer. I That's went in too fast, you. got understeer, which is where the car just wants to plough on and I want to turn Get right. Get the bomb hole on the power. Lock off. Get the wheel as straight as it can. It's your limiter again, Victoria. Lots Tiff, of I don't need you giving it that, all right? Losing time on the limiter. You've got to change right before it. Oh, we're going to be in somewhere in any minute now. Oh, it's going to end. It's never going to slow down. Oh, there's more electricity. I'm going straight again. The trouble is, the rev limiter comes in so quickly. Yes, it's called a rev count. It yeah, I know, but it actually does come in Victoria quite sets the pace with a 131.06. Woo! The Megane is very stable and has a brilliant engine. But it does suffer from understeer on the limit. Time for me and the GT86. Right, Vix, Toyota time. Now I'm, what, 65 horsepower down, but... but you are 100, 100 kilograms, kilograms lighter. lighter. The problem is that weight, it's 
47% only on the back, so the traction isn't there. But like, everybody thinks 50-50 is the perfect weight range, but it's not, as you know, because you want a bit more on your driven wheels. Yeah, definitely. Because that front wheel drum again has got 65% of its weight on the front wheels. But I do have the advice of balance and poise. Normally, rear wheel drive is the best way round. So basically, you think that you can win by having a higher cornering speed? Yeah, keep the speed up. Oh, I miss my gear, though. And what about your gearing? <laughs> yeah, right, I've got it now. Do you want me to do that bit? Right, we've got that stopwatch ready. What was it, one minute? One minute. 31.06 to beat. Slip it in the fifth gear. Oh, what? Fourth gear, but it's all the way through. Coming out at what? Oh, In another county. 92 miles an hour. <laughs> now, I had a massive load of understeer. Yeah, well, I've got a bit of understeer. Until I get the power in, I've got understeer as well. That's a short shift there. Yeah. Got to get the limiter in the middle. What did you get? About 115 on this straight. Yeah, somewhere between 115 and 120. Come on! 108, 109, 111, 112. 115. 16, I saw 116. Well, I'm never going to make the corner. As I You're said, right. perhaps I should have looked at the speed then. Gets into this bomb hole, but it's such a joy to drive. I mean, the balance is right there. A little bit of understeer and ending the corner with a little oversteer. That's exactly how you want a car, really. It feels a lot looser underneath you than my began. My began, you have to be pretty sort of tight and precise. Just one more corner not to make a complete mess, and I've got it a bit, oh, I've got it a bit half, I'm in too tight. You're fine, you're fine, you'll be cool. 31.06 to beat. You ain't going to beat it. Come on! Uh, 133.72. So you're close to 134. Two and a half seconds slower. I think it's a bit more than that. I think two and a half is enough. The rear-wheel drive Toyota is better balanced and carries more speed through the corners. It just can't match My McGann's sheer firepower down the straights. Overall, though, it's a 2-1 victory to the Toyota GT86. It's better off the line, has finer agility, can do bigger power slides and is even more fun to drive than the McGann all of which is thanks to its rear-wheel drive layout. So if you're looking to buy a brand new hot hatch, don't. Get a Toyota GT86 instead.